Hi there guys, FS Control Mentors and we are a bird. Yes sir, hope you guys are good. In this video, we are not going to waste your time. We are giving you guys the Nasdaq 2.0 course completely for free. Hope you guys watch the video up until the end. Make sure to also hit the like button, sub button and also share the video. So guys, in this lesson, we're going to cover everything you need to know about indices. And also we're going to cover the 10 steps that you need to follow in order for you to analyze Nasdaq or indices. This is all you need in order for you to learn on how to trade as a professional trader. Make sure guys, before you start watching the video, click the link in the description below to follow our free Telegram channels so that you stay updated on our current information. Without any further waste of time, let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is one of the members of FS Goats. So on this lesson guys, I'm going to help you with tips on how to trade Nasdaq, right? So I don't want to waste any further time, so let's just continue. So guys, as we're getting started, I'm going to give you guys expert tips on how to trade Nasdaq. As you all know, Nasdaq is a very volatile trading index, right? It's one of the indexes that we trade. So you want to make sure that whenever you're trading, we recommend that you limit your exposure to less than 5% on all open trades. So this is done to ensure that you don't put a lot of risk when you trade nasdaq because nasdaq is already a volatile pair so what that means is when you trade nasdaq be sure to stick to small loss sizes the more you're going to increase your loss size is more you're going to increase your risk so as we continue the lessons we're going to show you the importance of basically managing your risk that will help you ensure that you trade nasdaq in the best possible way before we enter trades guys we recommend that you decide on a risk reward ratio that is always positive that will ensure that you always have a positive statistical advantage so let me show you what i mean by that so guys as you know that whenever we trade nasdaq we have to ensure that we use a risk ratio of one is to two so why do we want to use this kind of ratio this ratio means that whenever i take a trade i am willing to lose one to gain an overall of two by so doing it ensures that all my trades will end in a positive manner so if I'm willing to gain two and lose one, this will ensure that my account grows regardless of how many trades I take. That's why it's important for you guys to make sure the risk ratio that you're going to take on each trade is always positive. That will ensure an overall account growth. So as we continue, guys, before you enter trades, you have to make sure that you never enter when there is major economic data release. You must make sure you always avoid such things. What I mean by that is we don't always lead the market. We must make sure that we react, but we don't lead. We want to see what the major economic data does and then we react afterwards. We never lead, but we follow. So major economic data can cause massive spikes in volatility. It is better to wait for the market to settle down before you trade again. So in order for you to improve, you need to make sure that you're going to record all your trades so that you can preview the trades afterwards. And by so doing, this can help you pinpoint and work on your weak points. Like we always say, you have to make sure that you're going to go back and see your problems because what you can review, you can't improve. So we have to make sure that you do not trade when you're emotional, tired or bored. You only trade when you have done your research and analysis and you are also confident in that trade. So now, in terms of your trading, you have to make sure that you're going to select a trading time frame that's going to suit your goal. So in terms of time frame, guys, we recommend trading with a structure called reverse pyramid. Let me show you what I mean by that. We have a nice reverse pyramid here, as you can see, guys. So the reason we're saying you have to trade with this kind of approach is to make sure that you know the overall direction before you enter each trade. So we're going to be starting from higher time frames and we're going to move into smaller time frames to pinpoint our entry points. So let me put that in writing. Yeah, so we're going to be using higher time frames, like example, weekly, monthly. So we're going to use higher time frames because they're going to help us understand the overall direction. And when we use smaller time frames, we want to make sure that we use them to help us understand our entry triggers. So by entry triggers, guys, what I mean is whenever you trade, you don't enter a trade unless you have a confirmation. All our trades 
will come from confirmations so you're going to see from the next lesson you're going to have technical analysis that's where we're going to go in depth in terms of how you're going to find your entries how to find your support how to find your resistance how to find where to enter and where to exit in order to do so in a more progressive manner you have to make sure you're going to use a reverse pyramid so now guys we're going to cover technical analysis like i've discussed before technical analysis will be discussed in depth in the next lesson so we all know that nasdaq is one of the world's most popular and widely followed indexes there is no shortage of technical and fundamental analysis meaning that whenever you're going to trade nasdaq indices or any index you have to make sure that technical and fundamental analysis still applies so the clear technical chart patterns that we have they're going to help us provide a distinct entry and exit signals so how to trade nasdaq 100 using technical analysis traders use technical analysis to analyze charts looking for buys and sell signals technical analysts can use indicators to help them identify current trends in the market shifts in sentiments or potential replacements as you can see we're going to use technical analysis to help us better time our entries so we all know that nasdaq is a powerful trading instrument that you need in order for you to trade in the moment so you must always be aware of the structure to be able to place accurate and even though an instrument is volatile you can exercise patience when trading so that's why you're going to be using technical analysis as long as you're going to enter a field where there is risk you have to make sure that you follow all your rules so now guys we're going to cover fundamental analysis as we all know we're going to be approaching nasdaq from a fundamental point of view most often because we know that companies affect nasdaq more commonly so how to trade nasdaq using fundamental analysis when trading nasdaq a range of underlying fundamental variables affect the price of the index. so traders must be aware of these variables and this possible impact on this. these variables can range from microeconomic events to fundamental composition of the index. so here are some of the main movers of the nasdaq 100 indexes number one we're going to be using the largest companies in the 100 so nasdaq is a market capitalization weighted index so the largest companies tend to move it the most like apple microsoft amazon as you're going to see as we cover the lessons so some indices are weighted differently and this can affect their prices so it is important for you to understand the difference between these indices, right number two we're going to focus in changes in the federal reserve stance on the monetary policy that can have adverse effects on all stock markets so this includes trading as the candidate index so the third one will be economic data like inventory employment cpi interest rates gdp this data can signal what actions the central bank will take on monetary policy and last but not least we're going to use trade wars and currency wars because they mostly can impact large companies in the nasdaq by way of tariffs and trade barriers so as you see guys the more we're going to cover the lessons you're going to see how we approach nasdaq because our approach is more of making sure that we do not lead the market but we follow and that's how you can be profitable when you trade nasdaq uh ladies and gentlemen i'd like to take this opportunity to greet you all uh uh, on this session, I'm going to be doing what? I'm going to be analyzing these uh, indices for you. We have the first one, which is called the NAS 100, the most famous one. The second one is the UK 100. The third one is the US 830. The fourth one is the SPX 500, the German 30, the France 40, as well as the Euro 50. So those are the indices that I'm going to be doing for you today it's all seven indices i'm gonna be analyzing them for you showing you uh, how to analyze uh, these indices and also uh, uh, showing you the skills that i use when analyzing these indices for you so first things first i find it very important for me to do this i'm gonna start by actually listing the 10 steps that i follow each and every time when i analyze indices so uh just uh a wait for me they're gonna be appearing in your screen so that you get to see them uh in a better way the voice is gonna be the same so i'm just gonna read them out for you the 10 steps that i follow when i do it when i analyze the indices then from that part we're gonna continue applying these 10 steps in each and every one of these indices that i'm gonna be 
doing for you today so the first one or the first step is that you move to a daily time frame so from what from every index that you start with you just then move to a daily time frame wherever you might get yourself into but you just start by moving to a daily time frame the second thing that you do you put your phone on portrait orientation so you then turn your cell phone screen into portrait orientation that thing that you do you look for an overall direction so in any indices that you're going to be analyzing at that time you look for an overall direction the fourth thing that you do you draw your diagonal support trend line as well as your diagonal resistance trend line so you draw those from what from your graph i'm going to show you also how to do so because uh, right now i'm starting by giving you an overview of the steps that you have to follow every time the fifth thing that you do you move from using japanese candlesticks into using the line chart so you then switch from japanese candlesticks to what to, to line uh, chart this will help you to be able to fix your trend lines and to be able to cater for everything that's the first step so doing so will help you to actually cater for everything and be able to do it to write your trend lines in a more accurate positions the seventh thing that you do you change the time frame uh, to four hours remember your time frame was on day one or d1 you now change it to four hours uh this will actually help you to be able to start looking for what for entry positions so it will help you to now be able to see where can i enter the eighth thing that you do you draw all the important levels from four hours so you then check which levels are important in my four hours those levels they will you will see as time goes on that those levels will also be forming part of your horizontal support and resistance so those levels will be clearly indicating to you that oh these are my horizontal support and this is my horizontal resistance it's no longer diagonal now now it's now horizontal so then uh, the ninth thing that you do you decide whether you have found your entries or you are still looking for those entries so you then check did i find my entries or i'm still looking for my entries so if you haven't found your entries then do the 10th step which is the last one you then move to a smaller time frame than four hours which can be one hour as well as 30 minutes you can then move forward to a smallest time frame as 15 minutes to look for your entry levels uh, those are the 10 steps that we follow every time when we do it when we analyze indices so without wasting time let me jump into or uh, indices now to just show you what is it that I do. The one thing that I just talked about right now, it sounded like a theory, but now let's make it to be a practical uh, uh, example. So we have the first one, which is called what? NAS 100. So you remember the first step that I said you do, you do what? You move to a daily time frame. Now I'm on a daily time frame. On a daily time frame, that's the first step that you follow. From a daily time frame, we then do what? You move your cell phone to what you put your phone to a portrait orientation which is the second step that you follow now my phone is on a portrait orientation i didn't do what i then follow the the what the fourth step the fourth step was what you draw your diagonal support trend line as well as your diagonal resistance trend line so let me start by drawing a diagonal supporting trend line this is my diagonal support trend line as well as my diagonal resisting trend line so uh, i've drew both of them right now i then follow what i then follow the other step the step is what move from using the japanese candlesticks to a, 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 a line chart then i'm doing the very same step uh, i'm moving from japanese candlesticks to a line chart i then do what i follow the sixth step which is fix your trend lines to cater for everything so i'm now fixing my trend lines to cater for everything um fixing my trend line to cater for everything that was within the line uh candlestick i'm drawing everything right now it's perfect it's perfect i then do what i then uh do what i follow the other step you change the time frame to four hours to now start looking for entries i then do the same thing 
I change the time frame to four hours to start looking for entries. I see that, okay, fine. From doing so, four hours tells us a different story. I must actually fix my trend lines to ensure that they cater for everything. To ensure that they cater for everything uh, in a perfect uh, format or in a perfect way. So here I am doing so. So I can tell that in four hours, yes, we're still moving in the same direction. I've even fixed my trend lines uh, to see what is it that is happening. I then do what I then follow the seventh step, which is that you draw all important levels from four hours. I'm now in four hours. I'm, I'm about to, I'm now in four hours. <clears throat> I'm now drawing all important levels. Those important levels are the so-called support and resistance. Now they are horizontal support and horizontal and horizontal resistance. So I'm drawing all the levels that I deem as important from this analysis that I'm having. I'm drawing all the levels where I see that it once supported and that it once resisted. Drawing all important key levels, which is 11,269. So that price level, I'll be expecting it to bounce from it. When it bounces there, it's either it's going to bounce and do it and then come back to retest this level, this level here, this level here, and push to the upside and push to the upside or it's gonna do it it's gonna do this or it's gonna uh, push and and break that line and come back to retest it and push to further up so this is the example so let me just move to a smaller time frame for me to be able to write it for you so but yeah you then it's gonna either move here and then from that part come back to retest and push further up or it's going to do the first uh, example that I did for you. Or it's going to do the first example that I did for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is NAS 100 for you. We are currently looking for buying opportunities as we are always doing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as well as with UK 100, we're going to be doing what? We're going to be following the 10 steps. The first step is this one. You move towards to a daily time frame and then you follow the second step which is you put your cell phone on portrait mode so those are the two steps that we have uh, done right now so then we go to the step number three which is you look for an overall direction an overall direction that i'm seeing right now is obviously the buying opportunities that i'm currently seeing and then you then do what you move to step number four which is draw your diagonal support trend line and your diagonal resistance trend line so yes let me start by doing that again uh this is my trend line drew it uh then i'm gonna draw it again on the other side yes there you have it and then you then do what you move from a japanese candlesticks to a line uh, graph and then you follow another step which is after that you cater for everything we then cater for everything You then cater for everything which is what we just did right now and then from that part you then move to what uh to step number six which is you fix your trend lines okay fine i've done that you then move to step number seven which is you change your time frame to a smaller one which is four hours then at four hours you then check whether it's still uh, catering for everything or it has moved and then you fix your 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 drawings now they are they are well off yes now they are well off, off they are all fixed and then you then do what you then follow another step which is what you then decide whether you see your entries or you should move to a smaller one uh, at four hours you then do what you then draw your 
important levels. So these are the levels that I'm going to be seeing as important and then catering them. Your levels, you must not forget that they form part as the resistant uh, 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 horizontal lines as well as the support horizontal line. So these are the two main ones that I'm seeing at this time and moment. Uh, this one and this one, those are the two main levels that I'm seeing at this time. So I'm seeing that, okay, fine. What was happening is that uh, the market has been playing around the support level as well as the resistant level. So both of those levels, that's where we've been having uh, the movement from the top to the bottom, from the floor to the roof, from the roof to the floor. So those are the two major things on your k800 that you can take notes that thereof and then even now you can still anticipate a push to the upside because we already uh, reached uh, the resistance uh, i mean the support and already with this new diagonal uh, supporting line that i'm introducing it also shows that we fail to cross the support the its support so we are still looking for what we are still looking for a push to the upside on this direction don't 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 forget we're still on four hours and we're still looking for a push to the upside on that direction so from four hours already now i can already see my entries i can already see my entries but uh, um, there is this point of sensitivity that is here you see that it, it acts as a very big supporting line so i can expect a minor retest on this level which is 6097.70 i can expect a minor retest then from that part i'm gonna be moving further up so let me move back to our uh, two candlesticks and see what is it that is happening exactly the very same thing is happening also in candlesticks i can then move to one hour for interest sake i can see from one hour that that retest that i was referring to on this uh, 6097.70 line already took place now i'm only looking for buying opportunities moving further up so yes there you have it folks there you have it thank you so much that was uk hundreds so without wasting time let us go to usa dating and check what is it that is happening with USA dating. Don't forget that we follow our 10 steps each and every time. Uh, the first thing that we do, we do what? We move to a daily time frame. From a daily time frame, we then do it. We then draw our uh, supporting uh, our supporting diagonal lines as well as our resisting diagonal lines. And then we switch to what? To a line graph to see whether did we cater for everything or there's something missing then from that part we then do it we then move to what to four hours to check on four hours whether it's really catering everything that we were thinking that it's catering or it's moving on its own lanes uh, we can already fix those minor mistakes that we had and then also fix those minor mistakes and then from that part we then move towards to Japanese candlesticks again. From that part, we then see whether can we conclude now about the direction or we still have to add trends within the trends in order for us to spot whether are we having selling opportunities or we are having buying opportunities. From this case, uh, on our trends and trends, we can already see that, oh, okay, no, it might be selling opportunities, but we cannot conclude since where we haven't did what we haven't drawn our what our levels, which are your horizontal supporting levels as well as your horizontal resisting levels. So let me draw these levels. Let me draw these levels. Let me draw these levels. Mm so let me draw these levels okay all the levels have been spotted i can already conclude by these levels that i've drew, i've drew right now that i'm actually looking for a push to the upside and if that push to the upside happens uh, uh, uh it's it's gonna be retesting uh twenty eight thousand one hundred and forty three point thirty two that price it's gonna be retesting it and then we're gonna be looking for what for selling opportunities 
that are gonna drop till 27,115.38 that price. If that doesn't happen, that means what after that uh after the push to the upside, we're gonna be expecting it to actually do it not to come back but to retest that uh, highest high there and then we're gonna be having a push that's gonna be moving outside of the zone that we are having at the time and moment so those are the only two what are uh, possible uh, uh, outcomes that we might be having from usa data so thank you so much uh, i'm done with a uh, usa day and now i'm gonna be moving right along to spx 500 with spx 500 i'm also gonna be following the 10 procedures that i told you that you must follow so let's start right now we got to we get to chart and then from chart we do what we move to daily time frame and then at daily time frame we do those simple steps again we do we draw our diagonal was supporting trend line as well as our diagonal resisting trend line you remember that uh, it's not accurate when it's in japanese candlesticks we then do it we then do a simple transitional step to move to a line graph then on a line graph that's where you get to see everything as clear as possible and then that's where you get to draw uh, uh 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 your trend lines in a more accurate and in a more correct manner so there you have it folks i'm currently drawing them right now i'm currently drawing them yes yes so there you have it your supporting a diagonal trend line as well as your resisting diagonal a trend line and then from that part you then do what follow uh, uh step number seven which is changing your time frame from a daily to four hours and then still when you're on four hours you you still check whether uh you've catered for everything or you've missed the blow of which i'm seeing that okay i did cater for everything i can then move back to japanese candlesticks again i can move back to japanese candlesticks and now i'm looking for what i'm now looking for my entries from these uh i'm gonna be doing what i'm gonna be drawing the major levels the ones that are more relevant to the situation that i'm encountering so this is my level the first level i'm spotting this is my second level that i'm spotting and then the and then this is not important that much but i'm gonna draw it as a level as well as the one that we are currently at uh, there at the top that's the final level that we are having and then from this i can zoom down and already by zooming down i'm seeing that we have uh, the trends which are within the inside trend those ones they must not be left out because they still play a very vital role towards the direction that we are gonna be taking at the time and moment so i'm having these trends that are within the majority trend here inside in four hours so i'm seeing that we had this small retest we are actually looking for breaking the the 3386 point uh, 23 level we're looking for that chance to break it but if we, we happen to fail we're then gonna break it, uh, it by moving further down coming back to retest the very same line and then from that retest i'm gonna be looking for push to the downside which is what your selling opportunities gonna be looking for what your selling opportunities but still since we are still within uh this uh trend line we're still within this diagonal trend line let me show you the trend line that i'm referring to is this one the blue one this one let me change the color thereof so that it's gonna be much more easier for you guys to actually see uh when i'm using a different color let me try a reddish color so that you guys can see yes this this so i'm saying since we are still within uh, this diagonal supporting trend line there are less chances that we're gonna break 
uh, we haven't broken it. So more th like more of the things that we are looking for is buying opportunities as opposed to selling opportunities at this current moment in time. We're looking for buying opportunities from SPX 500. Thank you so much. Uh, done with SPX 500. Let me move to German Deity. So this is German Deity, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be following the very same process. I can already see selling opportunities from just looking at one hour, but I'm going to follow my strategy by doing what? By going to a daily time frame. On a daily time frame, we apply the very same resources that we have, which is drawing your diagonal supporting trend line as well as your diagonal resisting a trend line. So now that they've been drawn, you then do what? You then switch towards to a line uh, graph. From a line graph, you cater for everything, ensure that everything is being taken into consideration. And then from that part, you then do what? You then move to four hours. In four hours, you check again whether are you still on a correct path or you've now missed a few of the things. You then do some small adjustments towards uh, whatever that you did before. That will help you know the direction that you are about to embark on or that you are about to take at the time and moment. So I'm forcing this one so it's irrelevant, but I think it's still relevant. Let me just try to draw it from here and see if it's not helping me with anything i know it's not so let me just remove it let me uh, remove it and then come straight here in front come straight here in front and see what is it that is happening i can already see that okay i didn't do it i didn't draw now my levels which are your horizontal support and your horizontal uh, uh resistance i can't find levels here uh it's not I, I can't find proper levels but i'm gonna try to get some few levels okay okay so guys here is another tip if you can't find levels you draw zones if you can't find levels per se you draw zones you draw zones zones will help you to know as to when i get to this particular level this is what i'm looking for if you can't find levels you draw zones because you know when you get to this zone this is what you are anticipating uh, to happen so zones they may play as a a, a byproduct of, of of levels if you can find uh, uh levels it's okay to use zones so it's okay to use zones they will also be very beneficial to you they will also be very beneficial to you so yes mm, yes so right now i'm looking for buying opportunities as as opposed to selling opportunities the reason why i'm selling i'm saying that it's because we are still within this uh, uh diagonal supporting trend line this one we're still within it we're still inside of it hence i cannot start selling now i can only start selling once we break this uh a diagonal a supporting trend line but before we can break uh before we can break or since we haven't broken it i'm looking forward for buying opportunities so that's what you get from german 30. thank you so much i can literally still move back to candlesticks uh japanese candlesticks it's, it's gonna be very clear and very nicer so i'm still looking for buying opportunities okay uh now i'm left with only two pairs which is france 40 as well as euro 50 so let me do france 40 
going to be following the very same procedure that I said we are going to be doing. So the first one is what? You go to a daily time frame. From a daily time frame, you then do it. You then uh, cater for your diagonal supporting uh, trend line, which is this one. I'm already seeing selling opportunities. From that, you then cater for your diagonal resisting trend line, which is this one, which is on the other side. So from this, I'm already seeing selling opportunities. You're going to analyze first. You're going to analyze first to see if my theory is proven to be correct or it's still wrong, uh, null and void. Then from that part, you then do it, then move to a smaller time frame. You're going to see the more you practice, the easier it becomes. So the more you practice this every day, the easier it's going to become. Every time you're going to see that, wow, I'm improving thoroughly. I'm improving thoroughly each and every day. I'm improving thoroughly. So guys, let me show you something. You see this trend line, I drew it here. Hence, I'm saying it's the cells. You see, I drew it here. It, res it supported one. Uh, two, let me move up uh, uh, three times here, and then it broke and came back to retest as what is a resistance. Hence, we had what selling opportunities. Come, come check here. It supported once, twice, and on the third time, what was supposed to, 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 to support, it broke and became a resistance. And from that part, we had selling opportunities. Hence why I'm saying here, I'm looking for big selling opportunities. I'm looking for big sales, pushing further down, pushing further down. It can sell to this position. It can sell to that position. I'm looking for big sales. Like this was so simple. This was the simplest uh, uh, analysis I did today. This was the simplest analysis I did today this is the simplest and the most cleanest uh, uh analysis that i did uh with you guys today it's so nice it's so beautiful as i told you that the more you do it the easier it's gonna become for you so i cannot waste time and move further uh, and analyze any further because it's already too clean it's already too clean but for interest sake I'm gonna wait for it to retest that small, uh, uh, that small uh, uh, a supporting trend line there at the top. Then from there, I'm gonna be looking for selling opportunities. Gonna be looking for selling opportunities. It already did. It's time for me to actually sell. So now, uh, France 40. You can sell it right now. So yes, you can sell it right now. Let's move to Euro 50 and see what is it that is happening with Euro 50. Remember, you start by going to a bigger time frame and then on a bigger time frame, you draw your diagonal supporting trend line. Um, seeing buying opportunities and then you draw your resisting uh, diagonal trend line. I'm seeing buying opportunities from this one. I'm seeing buying opportunities. Seeing buying since we are still within the majority diagonal supporting trend line. I'm looking forward for selling opportunity. I'm looking forward for buying opportunities. Then you then switch to a line candlestick, of which it still shows the very same thing that uh, the Japanese candlesticks were showing me. And I also see the nice point of confluence there, which confirms watch which confirms buys that point of confluence there it confirms buys that we had to buy when it got to that point and then i then do it i then move to four hours to see whether uh everything that i drew in a daily time frame is relevant or it's not i'm seeing that it was relevant since this one confirms that we are still within 
and then it confirms also my point of confluence there also confirms my point of confluence that it's indeed valid and it's still alive and then i'm gonna then do it i'm gonna do a resisting trend line uh, there you have it and then uh, let me do the direction i'm looking for for buying opportunities i may go back towards a japanese candlesticks i'm looking for buying opportunities at this time and moment i can still uh do it uh, i can still draw this one which will then give me an indication as to how long will those buys be so you can see that those buys won't be that long after we hit the these are going to be our take profits moving further down these are going to be our take profits moving further further down because there's a possibility for a head and shoulders pattern with this regard with this regard there is a possibility so i can now draw levels in four hours these are the levels that i'm seeing that's the, the one of the majority levels there one of the majority levels this is the other majority level here as well so if we fail to break that level i'm gonna be expecting sales till we get to this level down here if we fail to break that majority level then we're gonna be looking for selling opportunities pushing further down so there you have it folks that was uh, your Euro 50. That was your Euro 50. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed and you remember everything that I taught you on this lesson. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to greet you all and welcome you to the 10 steps that you follow every time when you analyze. So these are the FX code 10 uh, steps that you need to follow every time when you analyze. Without wasting any of your time, let me start with the first step. So the first step is that you move from whatever time frame that you were in to a daily time frame. Whichever time frame that you were in before you locked into your MetaTrader 4 is not important. You then start by actually doing what? By moving to a daily time frame. The second step that you then follow is that you move your cell phone to a portrait orientation so that everything appears clearly what is a portrait orientation it's that horizontal way of seeing like uh, your cell phone in a horizontal manner the screen becomes like much more bigger and better and easier for you to actually utilize the third step that you then follow you look for an overall direction remember you're now in portrait orientation you look for an overall direction whether it was the buys or the sells you then decide whether you are looking for bullish or bearish opportunities uh, number four, you start drawing your diagonal supporting trend line and your diagonal resisting trend line. And then the fifth step that you then follow, you move from using Japanese candlesticks to using a line chart. Number six, uh, you fix your trend lines and make sure that everything is catered for. Number seven, you move to H4 from day one one you remember you you were on d1 now you move to h4 to do adjustments again and to ensure that everything is catered for you do these adjustments again and then you move to japanese candlesticks again to start looking for entries when you are now on step number seven on four hours that's where you start looking for entries which entries am i gonna be taking on number eight you then draw your levels or zones or your horizontal support trend line and start your resisting trend line number eight you then draw your levels or your zone your, your zones are your so-called horizontal supporting trend line and your resisting horizontal trend lines so those are your levels which are then your zones that you then start drawing number nine you decide whether you found your entries or not if you haven't you then move to a smaller time frame which is a smaller than four hours it can be uh h1 m30 to m15 your h1 means what a uh, one hour 30 minutes as well as a uh, 15 minutes you then decide 
whether you have found your entries if not you then move to a smaller time frame which is smaller than four hours it can be h1 which means one hour uh, m date which means 30 minutes or 15 minutes number 10 you then move to a smaller time frame to decide where is your stop loss and your take profit uh ladies and gentlemen i greet you all and i welcome you to yet another video on this one i'll be doing the 10 steps that you need to follow when analyzing the very same 10 steps will be helping you to find perfect entries anytime when you are trading nas hundreds without wasting any time let's move to the first step and then from whichever time frame you are at that time you move to a daily time frame that's the first step you move to a, da a, a daily time frame okay there are drawings let me remove the drawings okay when you are at a daily time frame you then do what you then follow step number two which says you then move your cell phone to a portrait orientation so that everything appears clearly so you change you move your cell phone to a portrait orientation so that everything that you are having appears clearly. Let me repeat that step again. You then move your cell phone to a portrait orientation so that everything appears clearly. So right now, my cell phone is on a portrait orientation. I can then see everything appearing clearly. Step number three then says you then look for an overall direction. The overall direction means is it either buys or sells and you decide whether you are looking for bullish or bearish opportunities in that overall direction right now i'm looking i'm checking wow the overall direction looks like it's buys i'm buying in an overall direction looking at this right now i then follow my step number four which says you start drawing your diagonal supporting trend line and your diagonal resisting trend line so let me have my diagonal supporting trend line this is it I have it diagonal supporting uh i take the very same i draw it down here uh, take the very then I move it to the other side and I move it to the other side I see that oh wow this is the trend that I'm having I have my diagonal support and I have my diagonal resistance uh, I then fix it to cater and draw my diagonal resistance trend line to cater for everything there you have it it's well drawn i then do what i then move to another step which is step number five which is you move from using a uh, japanese candlesticks to using a line chart so there is it i'm here i'm now using a line chart and then number six you fix your trend lines to make sure that everything is catered for so here is is me fixing my trend lines to ensure that everything that is here is well catered for is well catered for it touches every trend line that i drew to ensure that everything i drew is well catered for mm, it's well catered for is well catered for beautiful beautiful Step number seven says you move to four hours from a daily time frame to do adjustments again and to ensure that everything is catered for. Do adjustments again and move to Japanese candlesticks again to start looking for entries. This is me now moving to a four hour chart. Uh, here I am doing adjustments to make sure everything is catered for nicely. I'm fixing my trend lines nicely. I'm fixing my trend lines nicely. I then do it. I move to Japanese candlesticks again. I'm now in Japanese candlesticks. Wow, everything is perfect. I then go to step number eight. Step number eight, it says you then draw your levels or zones, your horizontal support trend line and your resisting horizontal trend line. I'm now drawing my zones everywhere where i see that i have a zone i draw i see the first zone is here second zone that i'm seeing is here 
this is my zone the other zone that i see is here obviously the main one which is there at the top the last part there at the top i also see a possibility of a zone here see a possibility of a zone here i have my zones now which are my horizontal supporting trend line and my resisting horizontal trend line so i have my zones they are drawn i can see where i'm going now i can literally see which zone that i'm playing within at the time and moment so now i move to step number nine which says you decide whether you have found your entries or not if you haven't found your entries you move to a smaller time frame which is smaller than four hours it can be an hour 30 minutes or 15 minutes so right now currently i can literally say i see where my stop loss can be put and i see where my take profit can be put as well however if uh, uh, you don't see that as uh, uh, right now you then do it you move to a daily time frame you still look for entries you apply the very same information that you got you apply the very same information that you got you start by drawing the diagonal supporting trend line and you draw the diagonal resisting trend line and uh, you draw after that you draw your levels you see you are seeing other levels within you draw your levels again from this i can literally see the direction now everything is much more clear i'm seeing that nasdaq is going to buy i'm seeing buying opportunities from nasdaq right now i see that nas hundreds is in an overall buying opportunity the reason be beyond that there is another uh what there is another confirmation that i'm having if i draw this zone i have another confirmation the confirmation is that when a resistance turns into a support you buy so you can see it was a resistance here let me just uh, highlight it for you here we had nasdaq resisting it broke here and then now it's supporting the overall opportunities that we are looking for right now is buying opportunities so guys um that was the 10 steps so the final step is that you move to a smaller time frame to decide where you put your step your stop loss and take profit so at the moment i can proudly say this is where my stop loss will be this is where my stop loss will be at 11,157.96 and then i can literally start uh, drawing my take profits here my first take profit here my second take profit up the my second profit up there so guys there you have it i'm looking for overall buying opportunities on nasdaq however after we hit uh where after we hit the last part which is uh probably 11,601.60 that's where i'll be then looking for selling opportunities because you can see there is a strong resistance level up there at the top so guys, thank you very much for tuning into this lesson till next time goodbye